The U.S. is watching Moscow closely in 2020. Two weeks before the election, the FBI indicted six Russians on charges of engaging in cyber attacks on the 2018 Winter Olympics and the 2017 French election. No country has weaponized its cyber capabilities as maliciously and irresponsibly as Russia. Meanwhile, Microsoft reported that a Russian hacker group attacked hundreds of political organizations and campaigns. And a Facebook investigation discovered a network of Russian trolls that paid Americans to write for a fake news site. U.S. authorities have been cracking down to prevent what happened during the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Russia is behind the hacks that have brought Democratic Party and Clinton campaign emails into the public eye. The growing furor over Moscow's use of social media to influence the 2016 presidential election. The U.S. accused Russia of hacking and trolling attempts aimed at hurting the Democratic candidate in 2016. Moscow has denied any interference in the U.S. elections. U.S. officials, experts at social media companies, and researchers at cybersecurity firms all say that Russia remains a very active and very serious threat, uh, one that everybody is very much on the lookout for, even after Election Day. While officials and cybersecurity experts say they haven't found as much activity from Russia, and as we saw in the 2016, they say Russian hackers and trolls have expanded their toolkit and have become much more sophisticated and harder to detect. In 2016, Russian trolls created fake accounts and posted memes that attacked Hillary Clinton. They also bought advertisements on Facebook and organized events, including ones that drew support for Donald Trump. This year, the trolls tried something different. They set up a network of accounts and pages that were largely linked to a website called PeaceData.net. But to anyone who knows Russian, the website's name hinted at its trolling origin. When you say PeaceData quickly, it sounds like a Russian obscenity. PeaceData tried to look like a credible news outlet and trick people into then relying on that as their news. After a tip from the FBI, Facebook said it discovered that Peace Data was run by people linked to a Russian troll factory called the Internet Research Agency. It had been accused by U.S. authorities of designing a social media campaign to provoke political and social discord. What we found was a website that was entirely run by fake personas. Ben Nemo runs investigations at Graphica, a research firm that contracts with Facebook to analyze foreign social media manipulation. He says the trolls in 2016 mainly created group accounts, but in 2020, Peace Data's trolls got more personal. They had profile pictures that were generated by artificial intelligence. They then had a number of accounts across Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. And what they were doing was they were hiring real people, authentic freelancers, to write content for them. And so this does a few things for them. It does sort of separate Russia from the direct influence operation in a way that might make it harder to track, harder to identify. And it also leads to organic content in some ways that seems more real, seems more authentic because it's being written by a native English speaker who knows about American politics. The Russian embassy in Washington, D.C. said Facebook's allegations are anti-Russia propaganda. Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn took down accounts and pages linked to peace data. The website was eventually closed. In total, the site actually had a very small following. Overall, the traffic seems to have uh, not reached the levels that we saw in 2016, but that might only be a small representation of all the websites out there that Russia or anyone else is using to try to influence American voters. And so if we can understand the tactics, I think that helps us be on alert for similar kind of behavior that might be on the platforms. After the exposure of Peace Data, another website which was exposed, which was called NAEBC, uh, which posed as a far-right white supremacist site, was behaving in very much the same way, hiring unwitting freelancers to write for it. The hacks have also evolved. In September, Microsoft said it detected activity from the same Russian hackers who were behind the attacks on the Democratic campaign in 2016. The software giant said this time the hackers had new reconnaissance tools. Instead of emailing malicious links to steal passwords, they deployed password sprays, which essentially guesses passwords with multiple automated attempts. Microsoft said most of the cyber attacks weren't successful. The Russian embassy in Washington, D.C. denied Microsoft's allegations. The conspiracy of Russian military intelligence. Realizing the threat this year, multiple U.S. security agencies are working together to share intelligence with social media platforms. A Senate investigation found that U.S. tech giants helped spread misinformation during the 2016 election. 
and lawmakers pushed the companies to better coordinate. Heading into 2016, the idea of cooperating on something like election interference was just not happening. This was just essentially after the Edward Snowden leaks of uh, surveillance secrets from the National Security Agency, which really increased tensions between Silicon Valley and the government. Despite the team effort, it's still difficult to publicize Russian activities and not create confusion. Officials and companies are constantly grappling with the challenge of informing the public about foreign interference without being overly alarmist about it and scaring them so much that it actually accomplishes the goal of a lot of these foreign influence operations, which is just to sow chaos and discord to play on the existing tensions we have in America 